Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I hope that you are all having a wonderful evening thus far. And so we will be taking a look at what is currently happening across the North Atlantic with the focus to being on the Caribbean and uh, some surrounding areas. We'll also be looking at Cindy and the latest for the cyclone as it is weakening and conditions out there uh, helping to either fuel or inhibit development. And what are the chances that we could see something develop as we're going to be heading into July? July and could overall could we possibly see a hurricane in the month of July so I'll be taking you guys through all that is happening and all that is possible as you're going to be heading into the next couple of days and before I go into details please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important update okay and so we are starting out with this uh, view of the North Atlantic there we can see that uh, lots of activity is developing this afternoon this evening so there is Cindy pretty noticeable to the northeast of the uh, Lesser Antilles in the Caribbean there we have the remnants of bright uh, that blob of activity lots of showers and thunderstorms which will be bringing a lot of rain to parts of Central America and out in the main development region along the intertropical convergence zone there is uh, some activity there as well even a tropical wave that is propagating westward and so let's take a closer look at some areas here and so we're starting out with northern south america and so uh, here we can see lots of activity just in the vicinity of Panama as well as Western uh, Colombia. We also see lots of showers and thunderstorms developing across sections of Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana as well. Let's go to the Caribbean region now on a whole and we can see here that uh, it's really just the remnants of bread that is uh, the most notable area in the Caribbean. So as I said, it is going to be making its way towards Central America, Honduras, Nicaragua, and there's going to be a lot of rainfall from this. So it is uh, going to be a significant rainmaker and some of these heavy rainfall uh, events that are impending could even lead to flooding across some areas. So I'm really hoping that everyone there will be okay but as for other areas there's a bit of activity developing across other sections of Central America but not too much across sections of uh, Cuba going to Florida and parts of the North western Bahamas, sections of western Jamaica, and uh, parts of Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. But for most other areas, uh, it's pretty dry and should be sunny. Maybe overcast, but uh, nothing too much is going on this evening. And now we want to go ahead and talk about Cindy. So we're looking at the visible satellite imagery of the cyclone here, and we can see that there we have the center of it. Uh, exposed right now and most of that activity displaced to the northeast of the center of and around the rest of the cyclone we're not seeing much so it's pretty asymmetrical and that is due to the wind shear that is helping the cyclone to weaken right now and speaking of let's go on to the latest uh, cone forecast from the national hurricane center and so as of the latest uh, update from the National Hurricane Center, here we have the cone of uncertainty and we're seeing that by tomorrow, Cindy is expected to degenerate as the wind shear continues to take its toll. So it is, uh, it currently has maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour and is accelerating to the northwest at 16 miles per hour. Now, even though we're seeing that it should degenerate by uh, tomorrow, it could regenerate uh, near Bermuda as we're going to be heading into the rest of this week going into the next couple of days and hence could bring impacts however the NHC states that uh, there isn't enough certainty to actually show this on the current forecast track so we're going to have to wait and see what is going to be happening with this uh, cyclone here but it is likely going to be bringing impacts to Bermuda it is unlikely to be a threat to the U.S. but it could make its way into Atlantic Canada as we head uh, further out in time. And now we want to go ahead and take a look at conditions out there. So we're starting out with the sea surface temperature map and we can see that uh, sea surface temperatures remain pretty warm across the North Atlantic for the most part, the tropical Atlantic. And uh, the minimum requirement for most tropical systems is around 26 degrees Celsius. And they're well on their way, 27, 28, 29, even 30 degrees in some spots. So uh, that isn't going to be a problem when it comes on to cyclones attempting to develop. But what can be a problem is the wind shear as well as the uh, dry air coming from that Saharan air layer. So moving on to the Saharan earlier map uh, here we can see that this is looking pretty colorful so where we see more of those oranges and reds that is where we have denser or more abundant uh, amounts of dust present in the atmosphere
atmosphere. And this is likely going to be entering the Caribbean as we progress throughout this week and uh, helping to inhibit a lot of activity across the tropical Atlantic. So for example, last year in 2022, there was no development in the month of August. And that is, uh, this is one of the reasons, the abundant dry air. So there were tropical waves, but they just did not have any activity uh, to even try to morph into or develop into a tropical cyclone. So the abundant uh, dry air, it really helps to suppress activity and kept uh, August pretty quiet. The first August did not have any storms during a La Nina season. And there we have Cindy right there. Some dry air is also infiltrating that cyclone. But again, regeneration is possible and it could bring some impacts to Bermuda. So if you're in Bermuda, please be on watch. But for now, the Caribbean is in the clear in terms of a lot of that dry air. So not a lot is in the area right now. And uh, during July, we don't typically see a whole lot happening uh, for most hurricane seasons. But it's as we head into August, and head into the heart of the season in September when we see most uh, tropical cyclone activity. That is where we even have, uh, we can even have the strongest storm of the season develop. But we don't typically have a whole lot of hurricanes coming from the main development region in the month of June. So let's take a look at a few of them that actually developed. Uh, so this is the track of Dennis back in 2005. It came from a tropical wave that became a depression just in the vicinity of the Windward Islands. It made its way across the Caribbean, uh, close, in, uh, close in proximity to to Jamaica, going over Cuba, and into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and then there was Emily also from 2005. And 2005 was just a very crazy hurricane season. And by the way, the same list from 2005 was used back in 2017, which was a hyperactive season. It produced two Cat 5s, Irma and Maria. And then that is the same list being used this year. So a crazy coincidence uh, with that uh, same list. So uh, let's see what this hurricane season is going to bring but as of right now signs are pointing towards a very active season and then i'll go into 2020 2020 is the most active season on record as of now uh surpassing 2005 and this was a track of hurricane isaias that became a storm in the caribbean it wasn't a very strong hurricane but still did some damage uh it peaked as a cat one with winds of 90 miles per hour so those are a couple of uh, hurricanes that developed in the month of july but as i said we don't typically see a whole lot happening in july so should this July be pretty quiet or we just have, say, one or two storms? That doesn't mean that all oh, the season is going to be quiet. We still have August and there is September, which is the peak. If there is no other time or point during the season where there is a lot of activity, it is going to be September. So uh, now I want to go ahead and show you guys what the ensemble members for both the GFS and Euro are expecting as we're going to be heading into the next several days. So uh, they're hinting at something, maybe a tropical wave trying to get itself together coming from the main development region. But as I said, there is that Saharan earlier out there all of that that massive dry air and dust uh, that is going to be helping to suppress activity but let's look at what these uh ensemble members have to show and when the tracks get to that darker blue shade uh, that is where we have tropical storm force winds and we're starting out with euro tracks so there we have the forecast time now as we're going to be heading into tomorrow they're showing that cindy is going to be uh losing its uh, status as a tropical cyclone but eventually regenerating and heading to atlantic canada and also affect in Bermuda. So uh, here we have most of these tracks showing uh, the system being in close proximity to the island. And then as we're going to be heading into the early part of July, as the month is going to be kickstarting, uh, heading into this weekend and early next week, there we have a couple of members uh, showing that there could be something trying to come from the tropical Atlantic, a tropical wave trying to get itself together. Some of these members are expecting some uh, development here, but they're kind of spread out right now. And this is just a forecast, so it is bound to change as we head into the next couple of days. Head into the GFS ensemble members now. Uh, they're also expecting Cindy to drop off, but regenerate into a tropical cyclone on its way to Atlantic Canada. Uh, the model is also showing a lot of activity over in the east Eastern Pacific. Uh, so we'll look at the Eastern Pacific very shortly, but they're also expecting that a tropical wave could be trying to get itself together as we're going to be heading into the early part of next week and the start of July. So uh, as of right now, though, it is important to know that nothing new is marked on the NHC's outlook map. So nothing new for possible development, but that can change at any time. 
and also this is important to know this is where we typically have our systems originating in the month of july coming from uh, the tropical atlantic and developing as they enter the caribbean or even uh, into the gulf of mexico or the southeastern coast of the u.s so it is certainly not impossible but the determinant of any activity is going to be the favorability of the environment is there enough moisture uh, is the wind shear too strong so those will determine whether we see tropical storm a tropical storm uh, develop but certainly not impossible as I said and now we want to go on over into the eastern Pacific where there are two disturbances uh, that one highlighted in red they're given a high 80% chance of development through uh, seven days but a low 20% chance through 48 hours so we could see some development heading into later this week and there's that shaded orange area not seen an X there to show the location of that low pressure area because it hasn't yet developed however once it does as of now the chance stands at 50% through the next seven days and uh, if we do not have anything developing today which seems like the, uh, the likely outcome then this will be the first year on record to be this deep into the eastern Pacific hurricane season Season and nothing develops so it's going to be the latest start ever to the eastern pacific hurricane season since records began so that is likely uh once the new day begins tomorrow and so guys that is pretty much it for this update it's been pretty lengthy but i hope that you found it to be quite informative and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments i will respond as best and as soon as i can and remember to always be weatherwise